Hello and welcome to Tech Support Gaming, how to stream to Twitch with the Xbox One, the Elgato Game Capture HD, and OBS. So here you have your Elgato Game Capture HD. You're going to plug in the HDMI cable from your Xbox One or other console into the HDMI ink spot on the Elgato Game Capture. Then you're going to plug in the HDMI out, a cable from there, to the HDMI in on your television. Then you're going to plug in the USB slot on the Elgato Game Capture HD into the back of your PC. Preferably a USB 3.0 slot, but USB 2.0 will work as well. Now it's time to move to the PC. Okay, so now you've got your Elgato Game Capture HD hooked up to your television, to your Xbox or other console, and the USB cable from it hooked up to your computer. So now it's time to get the software ready to go. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to elgato.com slash en for English slash game capture game dash capture dash HD support and then you're going to hit download 1.4 for Windows 7 or 8 and then you're going to install that program and that will install the necessary drivers for your Elgato game capture HD. And then if you would like you can open up the software and test it out and see how it looks for you. I'll go ahead and search for it here. And there it is. Let's pull up the software and see what we have. Go ahead and turn your Xbox on at this point if you'd like or if you haven't already go ahead and turn it on before now. Mine has been on this whole time. All right, so now you can see we have the Xbox uh, home screen displayed here. Uh, you will note that there is a lag. I'm going to press the right button now. As you can see, there's about a two and a half second delay uh, from the time I press the button until the time you see it here. There is no delay, however, on my actual Xbox. So you can still play the game just fine, but you do get that delay from here, so you're not able to play on the computer from your Xbox, if that makes sense. You will need a separate TV. So we'll go ahead and continue from here. Um, if you would like, you can use um, this to actually live stream directly from here if you would like to. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. I'm gonna show you how to use OBS, which I think is a much better and much more feature-rich program to do so. But now we can clearly see that the game capture is working. So let's move on from here. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and open up OBS. If you haven't already downloaded it, install it. Go ahead and do so now. This is a from scratch OBS starting. So we're gonna start from the very beginning. I haven't done any configuration yet. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to settings. We're gonna to go to general English setting profile untitled. You can change that if you want to, to whatever, you know, streaming Twitch, etc. All right, then we're gonna to go to encoding, make sure we're set to X264, as that is the only uh, preset that Twitch will take. Make sure you're using CBR, which stands for constant bit rate. We're gonna be choosing that. Max bit rate, you can set there. Um, 2500 is a little high, that's what I typically stream at. You can stream a little lower for 1800 to get better performance for people with uh, mobile devices or with slower internet. Um, I prefer 2500 just for the quality, so I'm going to leave it at that. You're going to enable CBR padding, make sure that is enabled, and use custom buffer size. Set that to the same as your maximum bitrate. Uh, for the audio encoding, you can do AAC, bitrate 128, 48 kilohertz, and stereo. That seems to work just fine for me. I'm sure you could mess with that if you wanted to, but why mess with success, right? Now go to broadcast settings. Uh, the mode, you're going to do live stream, or you could do file output only if you wanted to do YouTube videos or something along those lines. Um, but for this particular purpose, we're doing live stream. So now you're going to do Twitch or slash Justin TV or any of these other uh, particular things here if you'd like to. Um, Twitch is the one that everybody seems to use, so what's the one I'm going to use and continue to use? and then select the server that is closest to you in geographical location. However, if you are having issues, for instance, uh, lag or problems with the delay, 
then or problems with the uh, stream itself then you might want to change to a different one for instance if i'm having trouble streaming i will switch to the central dallas one and i will have better results with that one if the san francisco one is overloaded all right and then it's going to ask you for your play path slash stream key if any what it's asking you there for is the stream key that you'll get from twitch there's instructions on twitch how to get that you'll paste that in there and then you want to select auto reconnect that way if you do time out you can, uh, if something happens, you will get reconnected in 10 seconds. You can do that if you want to. Either way, it really doesn't matter. Take your pick on that one. And then you can also set a custom delay if you'd want. Uh, this would be, for instance, if you're having trouble with stream sniping or things along those lines. Um, although there's already kind of a delay set there between 30 seconds to one minute. So you can set that if it's at your discretion there. Uh, minimize network impact. You could do that if you wanted to. Um, the recommendation for that is if you're having issues, try it. If not, leave it alone. You can also save to file. So if you'd like to save to file, you can go ahead and do that. And that will stream as well as keep a copy of it on your computer. You can also set a start stream hotkey if you would like um, to be able to start the stream by pressing the button on your computer, on your keypad or on your keyboard there. Uh, that's entirely up to you though. And then we'll get video. Well, would you like to save and apply your changes? Yes. Uh, video adapter. So here you can choose either the onboard graphics or your video card. Um, the video card typically is the best way to do that because what it uses is it uses DirectX to compile the video together into the layers and whatnot. Uh, your base resolution can be, this is the resolution that it's coming from. So base resolution is 1280 by 720 meaning that that's the resolution that we have on this screen here. Now, if you would like, you can change that. Probably just leave it the same and be okay. And then the resolution downscale. So what this is, is if you want to output at a different, uh, different resolution than you're streaming at. I don't choose to downscale. I stream at 1280 by 720 um, HD, I guess you could say. And frames per second 30, because that works just fine. Now let's talk really quick about uh, PC power. So here is the information from my computer. So I'm running Windows 8.1 Pro. I have an Intel i7 2600 processor uh, running at 3.4 gigahertz. I have 16 gigs of RAM and 64 bit operating system. This computer I named Twitch because that's all this entire game's the computer's purpose is to play games and stream to Twitch. So that is pretty much, uh, it's a good computer to do this with. When I stream, it's running at about 20% CPU. So that seems to be pretty good usage there. So if you have a powerful computer or a good computer, you can run at 720 HD. If you do not, then you might want to try throwing the downscale in there. But that will be up to you. For audio, uh, so your desktop audio device, you can do default, and that's referring to the system sounds it will take, and it will display that across the stream. Uh, for your microphone, you're going to choose whatever microphone you like. I have a studio microphone that I use, a Samson CO1U. It is a good microphone. I picked it up for around $45 on Craigslist, and it works just fine for me. The retail on the microphone is like $90, I think, so I picked it up for about half price. Or you can use the microphone from your webcam if you would like, but that's up to you. So I choose, make sure you choose the microphone that you're going to use. Hit it there, okay. Um, this is show only connected devices, blah, 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 whatever. So now you can have a mute key if you would like. So you can have a key to hit to mute your microphone and want to unmute it as well if you would like. Entirely up to you in that one. Uh, desktop boost, this is going to boost the sound of your desktop and microphone or auxiliary boost. So if you select three, it's going to multiply it by three times. Now here's something important. As I showed you, the delay from the Elgato is about two seconds from when I press a button to when something happens. So you set the microphone sync offset by 2000 milliseconds is equal to two seconds. So what happens is, is the computer stores the audio from the microphone for two seconds and then it displays it. And we're going to also do the same thing with the webcam because that way if you're playing a game, you're not reacting to something after it's already happened, you're reacting at the same time. So it's important to do that just for continuity for your viewers. And once that's all set, we're going to go to advanced. Yes, we like to save our changes. This stuff I, is pretty much all what you want to use. So multi-thread optimizations, um, allow other modifiers on hotkeys. I don't know if that is, whatever. Uh, CPU preset, I use very fast. Not sure what that means. Um, and I use the main encoding profile. 
keyframe interval is two seconds. Make sure you set that to two seconds. Otherwise, Twitch won't accept it. Um, this is pretty much the basic settings that Twitch asks you to use. This is good. And this is if you want to use more than six, more than 30 frames per second or more than 60 frames per second. So this will allow you to select 61 to 120 frames per second when you're back in the video tab over here. Right here, you can select more than that if you enter that. If you want to do that, go for it. If you feel like being crazy, go for it. Uh, the rest of this stuff, just leave it alone for now. I don't know what to do with it. Uh, browser, this is for if you have CLR browser installed. This is the microphone noise gate. So what this means is this is going to allow uh, certain decibels of sound to not enter the microphone. This is important if you have a lot of background noise. So what will happen is if you have uh, you set the threshold, the closed threshold and the open threshold. And what this does is it allows to mute the input signal once it goes below the closed threshold. So when the sound drops below 23 decibels, negative 23 decibels there or whatever, what it will do is it shuts off the microphone. And then once it goes above negative 17 decibels, it will open the microphone again and allow it to go. So it's kind of a nice thing to be able to do. Um, if you have a lot of background noise, this is a pretty decent setting. It seems to work okay. You can take it off if you want to. Don't know that it adds a whole lot. I did it when I had a lot of fan noise behind me, but I don't think it's necessary anymore with my new setup. So that's pretty much it for the settings there. Hit apply, hit okay, done. Our settings are good. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna preview your stream. And right now you should have pretty much nothing on the stream. It should be completely empty. So we're gonna add source. And I already have my sources set up, but you'd go to video capture device and you would select your Elgato and then name it whatever you want to. We're just going to name it Elgato. Does that make sense? And here you can see it initializing and you can see as I'm talking, the microphone is going up, which is kind of nice. You can see that it's working perfectly. All right. Now you can see we have our Xbox here displayed in OBS. You can I just pressed the button and it took about two seconds to go. One, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. Perfect. All right, so that is working. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to leave that like that. You can go into the properties if you want to of the Elgato and change some of those. So Elgato Game Capture HD. So you can flip the image horizontally or vertically if you'd like. Um, you can configure it using the same settings that the uh, program gives you but they're all good to go. So we're just going to leave that there. You can change the opacity. So if you wanted to make it uh, slightly transparent for some reason, you can totally do that. Um, custom resolution. We're going to leave that alone because we're just going to use the basic resolution. And then you could do the use buffering if you wanted to, uh, to buffer it and slow it down, but we don't need to buffer it. So I don't know why that's checked, but it really doesn't matter. We can just leave it alone. Um, so audio input device, use device audio. This is important. And then you want to make sure that you output the audio to the stream only. You don't want to output the audio to the desktop. Otherwise you're going to get uh, double of the audio because you're going to have the audio coming in from your desktop that you typically have from running your computer. And then it's going to add this and then it's going to also output it to the stream. So it'll get kind of confusing and it'll double it up and it'll sound really annoying. And you could do a chroma key if you wanted to. There's really no reason to on this particular thing. So don't do that. So that's pretty much it for the configuring of the Elgato in that particular section. So we hit okay there and that's good to go. Now we're going to start building the rest of the profile here for us. So oh, since we did that, it's going to refresh again. All right. So now we're going to add another source. You do video capture device and you select your webcam. My webcam is a Logitech C920 webcam. So I'm going to head, go ahead and select that hit. Okay. And then bam, there's me full screen. We're going to go ahead and edit this and let's shrink it down a little bit. Shall we? That's probably a good size right there. Okay. So the settings for this, as you can see, my voice is delayed because it's already been set up with a delay. So right now it's using the buffering for milliseconds, 2000. Perfect. Because that's what we have our microphone set to. So we want to be able to have the setup, the microphone sync with the video on the audio the video and the audio sync together. So that's what we're going to do that there. So as you can see, you have the same options here. Um, you can, you want to make sure you disable the audio device on this particular, on your webcam, because you have your microphone in front of you. If you do not have an auxiliary microphone, you'll want to make sure to select the, uh, audio input from your particular, um, from the webcam itself. 
So you can do that and then you'll output the audio to the stream only again if you're gonna do that. Now, if you have a webcam or if you have a green screen, you're gonna to wanna to use a chroma key. Now, the way this works is you'd hit that and you'll, as you can see, I used to have one, so it has it set up still. You select, hit select there and then choose whatever color you wanna blur out. So if we pick that gray, it's gonna blur out anything that's close to that gray. Similarity, you can change that to 10, for instance, and the blend, you can change this to 10, and you can see that it's gonna take anything that's that gray color, and it's gonna to try to black it out or get rid of it. You can also select a different color, so we can do black, and it's gonna to try to take out my shirt there, it looks like. See, it's kind of strange how it works, but. It just takes out whatever color you select. So if we select this beige on my shirt, face here it gets rid of it it's kind of weird anyways that's if you want to do a green screen so the idea is is that a green screen the colors that on the green screen are not close to any other colors that you have in your room typically or on your clothing so in that particular situation you'd select the green from your green screen and kind of adjust the blend and similarity until it matches your until it's completely blurred out so that's cool there if you have a green screen if you choose not to do one that's cool too all right, so that's a basic stream setup there. We have our webcam and we have our um, game, actual gaming setup there. You can add as many sources as you want and many different things. I'm trying to think of what else I have here. So if you have alerts for a follower or a donation alert or a chat overlay, you can select those things as well and add those into there. Um, you can also just select a regular image if you would like to. I'm not sure what images I really have here to be able to display, but sure, you could do, uh, here's a GIF that I can add in here. I'm not sure if it'll work, but why not? Oh, it does work. This is one of my uh, follower alert GIFs that I had there. So you can add just about anything you want to. Uh, images and videos, if you have the right plugins and everything, you can even add a video to play, which is kind of nice. Um, you could go select it and you'd have to you can even add an URL if you'd like for a video. Anyways, that's if you wanted to. There's a lot of options in OBS. It's a great program. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. Um, you can add, there's plenty of tutorials online. I hope my tutorial was good for you guys. I hope that it works out for you. I hope that you have fun streaming. I used to have a kind of popular Twitch channel, but I deleted it and I'm starting over again on this tech support gaming channel. So if you recognize me from the username as IT Outlaw, that is why. Um, but I got a little bit bored of that. So now I'm coming back to Twitch as tech support gaming. I will be streaming here in the next week or so. But for now, I'm just going to be making a few YouTube videos like I used to have on my IT Outlaw channel about how to stream my streaming setup. Um, my other video that I have up right now is the uh, setup for the build that I did for this room that I'm in right now for the streaming room. Be sure to check that out. If you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to drop me a comment and I will respond to it as fast as I can. So good luck, guys. Thanks for checking out the video and good luck streaming.